What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the front lower ball joints on the 100 series Land Cruiser. I've actually been putting off doing this job for quite some time, mainly because there's a lot of pieces that need to be removed and also because Toyota only sells the front lower ball joint with the lower control arm. But I'm finally going to suck it up and do it now. Um, the creaking and the squeaking from the front suspension has just uh, bugged me so much that I'm uh, willing to suck it up and uh, just get it done. Luckily for me, I have found a couple of aftermarket companies that do sell a quality lower ball joint that fits in the 100 series Land Cruiser. And um, I will have that listed in the description down below. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. And for more Land Cruiser slash Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. Also, for a sneak peek on what I'm currently working on, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at SoOverland. Now, let's get started. This is the ball joint that I got. That's the part number. It's made by Centric. They're a pretty reputable brand. Um, they make a lot of OE stuff. Um, you can't get just the ball joint from Toyota. You have to get the whole lower control arm. Um, that's why we got uh, the Centric part. And um, this one will fit the Land Cruiser 100. So after you take off the wheel, you have to take off the spacer the brake caliper, upper control arm bolt right here, tie rod, and then you can get to the bottom lower control arm bolt. Once you remove all that, put the brake to the side, the whole hub comes out and then you'll be able to get to the lower ball joint. Now that I've loosened pretty much every single bolt on here, I've got the last one that's hanging on a little bit uh, on the upper control arm. Once I break that loose, the whole hub should come off. Now just as a word of warning, the hub is extremely heavy, so be careful. Now here you can finally see the lower ball joint. Um, it's held in by this C-clip right here. Uh, after we take out the C-clip, we can try to press it out. So um, the best way that I've found to take out the C-clip is to jam a screwdriver in one side and the other side chisel it out. So let's give that a shot. There we go. Now the next step is to set up the ball joint press. Um, this kit I used uh, was rented from uh, O'Reilly's. 
Um, it is a good kit to get the ball joint out, but getting it back in deemed difficult. So um, I'll tell you, I'll show you that in a little bit, but let's get this guy out first. That would go a lot easier with a, a little bit of a PB blaster. There's the old ball joint. Doesn't look too bad, but um, you can feel it's a little loose in there, a little notchy. So um, good thing we're changing it out. So the new ball joint has this little groove. You gotta press it in from underneath and then it has a, a uh, little uh, clip that goes in there uh, that holds it in place. Now what I usually do, put a little bit of grease around here just so it helps it slide in a little bit easier. Um, yeah, Maybe a little bit on the actual arm and make sure you clean off the arm so that way there's no dirt or grime getting in your way. For the bearing press kit, it is really annoying because they don't give you um, a clamp that's kind of long enough to put the spacers on both sides, which you need. Now, so for the bottom side, when you're pushing it up, you have this guy, which goes over the little rubber boot and slides onto the metal part, which is great because that's where you want to push. You don't want to push on the rubber boot bottom piece right here I'm going to put it right there now if we do the what we used before if we use that big um, yeah the big uh, cylinder and did this the clamp doesn't fit as you can clearly see um, if you guys can find a bigger one then this would work but what I did instead of using this piece right here I found the oil filter wrench uh, for Toyota Lexus, actually it's just big enough. So let's give it a shot, see if it'll work. Check that out, that's my setup, so let's see if we can press the bearing in. Now you'll know when it goes in, it'll suddenly get really tight. Okay, let's give that a little look. Looks like we're good. It's all pushed in. Did not harm the boot. You can see the little uh, slot where the C-clip is supposed to be. I think we're going to be okay. So this is the new uh, C-clip. 
Uh, it's a little uh, different than the other one. The other one where it was a big opening and you just kind of shoved it in. This one you actually have to spread it with some snap ring pliers. So let me see if I can actually do this. There we go, not the most elegant display of a snap ring plier use, but the snap ring is on. Now it's just a matter of putting the hub back in the axle, back on the new ball joint, back on the upper control arm ball joint, putting the tie rod back in, and then putting the brakes back on. go everything is installed all the cutter pins are back in now might be a good time if you have an aftermarket control arm like me to grease the zerk fitting check your brake pads you know check a bunch of stuff before you put the wheel back on and that is it now i've been driving the land cruiser around since the ball joint replacement for another maybe a thousand or so miles and i have had no squeaks whatsoever it's been riding really smooth without any issues if you've been wanting to do your lower ball joints for the 100 series land cruiser for a while i would definitely suggest you do that sooner than later one it'll take care of any type of squeaking or creaking that you have uh, in the front suspension and two it's probably not safe rolling on ball joints that have 200,000 miles on them. That's it for this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. And for more Land Cruiser Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.